Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. This is a 2014 Jaguar F-Type. We saw it in a previous video and now we're going to dive in. Let's take a look. So this one came all the way from Louisiana. I've actually had Magic Mike on it diagnosing and really just going through and see what all the things are wrong with it. The customer had some issues, had a new engine put in, and it's just been a nightmare ever since. And finally they said, I don't care if it's three states away, four states away, I want, I want this fixed right. So they sent it to Omega, and here it is. Now it's in pretty good shape, it's not dinged up, it's not beat up, it just has issues with the engine and primarily the installation of the new engine. It's really, really sad. Let me have Magic Mike walk us through it. Looks like you have a novel over there. Yeah, there's quite an interesting story on this particular Jaguar. Uh, so it sounds like originally he bought this car with about 45,000 miles on it a few years ago in perfect operating condition. Uh, a few months went by and he said he noticed some coolant leaks that he was having mm -hmm. and he also wanted to do some work to the supercharger. The t what he told us was he wanted to do some work on the supercharger snout. I'm not sure exactly what that means, if it was an upgrade or just a change, replace parts. Uh, but ever since then, he started having a uh, loss of power and a few more weeks went by and he took it back to the shop and they said, oh, you've got a bad injector. It looks like it's stuck open. They fixed the injector. Apparently they had to remove the head in order to get the injector out. Hmm. And soon after they got that repaired, they noticed that they no longer had compression in one of the cylinders. And that's when they decided now we need to do an engine replacement. It sounds like they did something to the car and possibly ruined the engine. That's what it sounds like to me. It's kind of got an interesting story just to get it here. It sounds kind of fishy, guys. So he actually, these people that did whatever to this engine, are they the ones that also put in the next engine or? To the best of my knowledge, yes. They also put the engine in. Uh, and after that, he noticed he was having even more issues than originally. So he took it to a dealer and they said, we're not even going to touch it. Uh -huh. They recommended another independent shop and that independent shop also said, no, we're not going to touch this car. And that's when he sent it over to us. That's really crazy, guys. So what did this guy do to deserve this? I mean, what, I would like to know, what did this owner of this car do to get shafted so hard? He just, he's got cash in his pocket. He wants it done right, fix my car, and it's gone six steps back further than what he originally started. He's way back here when he should be up here somewhere. Finally, it has to come here to get fixed right, and you found some really crazy things, huh? Yeah, there's some pretty obvious things just from popping open the hood and pulling off the engine cover that have me a little concerned about the repairs that were done. Well, let's get the hood open and take a look. I definitely want to show the guys what you found. Sounds good. So one of the first things that I noticed when I popped the hood on this car but looking up here, quite a bit of this wiring is exposed. Like they've cut back whatever the original tape or the looming that was on there. They've just cut it and decided, nah, we don't need to replace it. Wow. One of the next things that I noticed was looking up here at the hood hinges. You can see that this one's missing a plastic cap and on that side, it's just not even bolted down. So they put the bolt in like two or three threads and said, yeah, that's good enough. Exactly. It's up to Jag specs. Yep. Wow. I helped it, you out there. <laughs> thank you very much. And it just gets better from here, huh? Yeah, there were a few strange things that kept going on. One of the first things that you noticed was this hose clamp for this coolant hose. Yeah. Not even, uh, not even secured. So they put the hose on and said, yeah, that's good. Good enough, tight. And while I was looking around back here, I also noticed I put a mirror back here to try and show it a little better. One of the bell housing bolts, it's only a couple of threads in. Oh my goodness. And they just said, nah, yeah, that's good enough. And if you also look back there, there's a little bit of an O2 sensor bracket. That's also not even bolted in. That's supposed to go where that bell housing bolt is. And they just left that one out. Same thing on this side. Another O2 sensor bracket that's just I wonder, can you reach the other bell housing bolt with your fingers and just see, is it tight or loose, or? Uh, the one right next to it? Yeah. Yep, so the one right next to it, that's definitely tight. Okay. So they got the one bolt in, like two threads, and said, yeah, that's, that's good. Yep. 
it doesn't hurt anything to have one or two bell housing bolts loose. I guess they could rattle off and fall off, but that just start makes you question the rest of the engine. What else is loose? Exactly, and a, a few of these plastic fittings, you can see this coolant vent line right here. It appears that it was broken and just secured with a zip tie. They didn't. They decided they didn't want to replace that. Oh, they just zip tied it together. Yep. Wow, this is this is pretty sad. Yeah, and on these plastic air intakes, you can see it on Mrs. Wizard's side and on this side. There's supposed to be a bolt right under that cross member. I'll see if I can wiggle it a little bit. Not even there. The bolt's just not even there at all. And it's the same thing on this side as well. So seeing those bolts and certain caps missing just makes me a little concerned about the people who put this engine in this car. It definitely makes me concerned there are bolts that are hidden or torque converter bolts or clutch bolts or different things that we can't see, we can't feel with our hands. Are they tight? Are they good? That's what really makes this situation scary and very, very sad. I really feel bad for this guy, Magic Mike. Yeah, it's a tough situation to be in. You know, you hope that these shops are doing the kind of work that you're paying them to do, and when they don't, you just get frustrated. And everybody makes a mistake once in a while, and then you say, hey, sorry about that. You own up to it, you take care of it, and move on, but this is just gross negligence. This isn't an accident. That's what it looks like to me. So is there anything on the bottom that's a surprise? or Nothing too much on the bottom that I could find. A few also loose brackets, nuts missing from certain places. Uh, but underneath, everything looked to be okay. Let's go ahead and raise it up and take a look underneath and just see what it looks like. Sounds good. So you're saying there's even more stuff under here? Yeah, I found a few more things underneath the vehicle once I had it up in the air. One of the first things that I noticed was I just had a little, uh, just an extra bolt just hanging out down here next to the alternator. I wasn't able to figure out where it goes to, but again, just a little concerning. Yeah, that is concerning. And it just, the list keeps going, huh? Yep. And if looking over here, we've got some hoses and there's supposed to be a bolt right here to hold them in place. Oh yeah, and that goes onto that and holds it all on. Yep, and those are just bouncing around. Wow. And then you mentioned something, there was other things? Yeah, there were a few other things on these heat shields. Some of the fasteners didn't get put back. So this is free to rattle around as well. Holy cow, is the other side that way too? Other side's the exact same way. Oh, wow. So I'm sure that's going to make a little bit of a rattling noise driving down the road. So right here is the high pressure fuel pump. There's two of them. But this one, the cover's just dangling here. Like they didn't even want to go through, put the effort in just to snap it in place fully. And that's a little strange. Yeah, I found something over here. On both sides of the transmission, there's a harness. It's not even connected like it should be. It's not snapped into place. It's just dangling. And then on the other side, you can see that one's supposed to be attached to the transmission and secured nicely. It's just dangling. When they had this engine out, they probably had to move some harnesses or something out of the way to get to certain things. And there's little clips that it should clip on. They should at least try to reattach it, or at least zip tie it or do something. But they just left it dangling like, I don't care. But you mentioned there's a possible catalytic converter. Yeah, I have a check engine light on in this car, and one of my fault codes is for a catalytic converter system efficiency bank one. And so I, when I pulled up, when I picked up the car, I noticed this has got to be the original exhaust. Mm -hmm. There's no way they replaced this with the engine just from the condition of this exhaust. One of the things, like when he mentioned in his page that he wrote, there was an injector open and it did an engine meltdown. Mm -hmm. It very likely cooked the catalytic converters when that happened. So let me bang on it. Usually you can hear if it's rattling. Yeah. I can hear a little bit of a rattling. So those cats very likely could be cooked. That's not going to be cheap. Not on this car. Well, let's go ahead and move on down and look at the rest of the car while we're here and then we'll get it back on the ground.
Even though they just worked in the engine bay, it's always good to take a look everywhere because you don't know what in the world happened. That uh, drive shaft looks good. Nothing leaking on the differential. The boots look good. Here's our active exhaust. I don't see anything out of the ordinary back here. Take a look at these brakes. They're good. The rotors look good. Nothing's loose. The sway bar link is tight. The struts are dry. The boot is good there. We can move to the other side. Sway bar link is tight there. Strut is dry. Boot is good and the brakes are good. Nothing's loose. Luckily, it seems like our problems are just in the engine bay area. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So you scanned for codes, you found the issue with the cats. Did you find anything else at all? Or? I found a fault code for the EVAP purge flow being mm -hmm. uh, out, of, out of specification. So my first thought was to smoke test the system and check it for leaks. And I didn't see any leaks, which was a good sign. So the next thing I wanted to check was the purge valve, and that I found to be bad. I was able to pull it out and bench test it, and that came back as being stuck closed. Okay, let's open this back up and take a look. So looking down here, this is the purge valve for this vehicle. I was able to pull it out and bench test it, mm -hmm. and I found that even when I was applying 12 volts to it, it was staying stuck closed. Okay, so that would be why there's low flow, because it's stuck closed no matter if there's power there or not. Correct. So that and the catalytic converter, luckily it doesn't seem that there's any performance issues other than that. It's just a lot of careless bolts and nuts and things. And Yeah, and it just is a little concerning, kind of hold on your fingers hoping that they did everything else correctly. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to dive a little deeper just to make sure. And also the cats are going to have to be replaced very likely. Definitely. Wow, this is nuts. Well, it looks like you're doing pretty good in finding out all the screw-ups that they made. Yep, getting my list together. Yeah. So, like I said, there's, there's always room for a mistake. Everyone makes a mistake once in a while. But this doesn't look like one mistake. It looks like, like I said, gross negligence. It's just like, I don't care. I agree. Wow. Well, I'll uh, let you take a little break. You've been working pretty hard, and we'll, uh, we're going to take a look at the interior. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Well, hey, ladies, gents. I'm excited. I love Jaguars. I really do miss my 01 XJR. It was supercharged. It was a fabulous beast. But this is going to be a nice comparison as well. This has 64,878 miles on it right now. And you can tell by the interior, it is in good, good shape. Other than having those issues in the engine bay, that's an amazing condition. We have a really, really dark charcoal interior and nice leather seats with really nice bolster on the sides. They really give you a grip when you're in the seat. So even though this is a really small interior, it does have some really cool characteristics. If we look, it has a beautiful Jaguar jumping on the screen, has simple dial controls, and then it has just some very simple buttons that can just be, you know, tapped down to work. Very easy to use. Nice push button, and you can tell you know, it's had a little bit of a use because, again, somebody with a bit of a fingernail has rubbed off some of the paint on there. But again, you can see that it is an automatic. And one fun little feature is that it has this really cool little armature on the side. I guess that's for the passenger, so if you're ripping and tearing around on the road, you can grab on this with the left hand, grab on that on the right hand, and you can stay in the car. But as you can see, being that this is a small car, you need to have a little extra space so that it did make the steering wheel flat on the bottom, so if you're taller. I'm 5'9", but obviously people are taller than me driving this car, so you need to make sure they have a little bit of leg room because the seat is all the way back. Has some really cool controls here for the seat. Nice that it's on the door, not in that center section. Center section was controlling, you know, things like the trunk and the convertible top. Hey, but this is a really cool car. Why don't we take a look around it? We've not actually seen a 360 on this guy yet. You can see it's an S model. It has a very cool Jaguar front end. 
It's not the Jaguar of the old days like we remember, but this is more along the lines of their modern styling. I think it looks really cool, Mrs. Wizard. I really like it. It has 20 inch wheels. Look, there's a kitty. Aw, it's a cute little one. Got some Michelin tires on it. It does have a couple little scuffs or something. It looks like clear coat or something. I'm not sure what's going on there, but really not that big of a deal. Like I mentioned, other than the issues they're having in the engine bay with previous repairs, the car is in really pretty decent shape. It has a really cool rear end. I love these, it's like a slit with a little circle or a half circle almost. It's really cool. It has good sounding exhaust. It sounds really good. We'll start it for you guys here in a minute. As you can see again, it is the S model. No dents or dings. I've been finding a lot of this stuff seems like it's plastic. Maybe that's to keep it light. Looks like it has a clear bra on it that keeps rock chips to a minimum, protects the paint. And we're back to the really pretty front face that it has. And there's another, another kitty there, Mrs. Wizard. Yeah, I kind of do miss the Leaping Jaguar, though. Yeah, it has one on the back, but not up front. Not, they don't have them sticking off like they used to. I miss that from my XJR. Yeah. <laughs> So as you just heard, it sounds really good. It's very similar to your Maserati Levante. It has a nice growl to it. But my engine's based on a Ferrari. Yeah, this one's definitely not Ferrari based. We've got our work cut out for us. We've got a lot of reattaching, a lot of hardware, a lot of bolts. Who knows what else we got. We're also gonna pull off the cats and see if they're physically melted on the inside, which very likely they could be. And then we got the purge valve. We got a few other items to take care of. I'm hoping that it's just reattaching everything properly, putting all the right covers in place and the wiring and taking care of cosmetics and verifying everything else, purge valve, cats, and that's it. I hope that that's all it is. The engine seems to be very healthy. The core of the engine, it starts right up, it runs smooth. I don't think there's any issues there, but I'm crossing my fingers that we can get this taken care of and the bill doesn't go super high. We're, we're hoping so. Once we get the purge valve fixed and the catalytic converter situation solved, then we can definitely dive in and make sure there wasn't other issues caused by that or being caused by that. And double check all the bolts. Like you saw, this is one of those where you go to, you literally have to check every bolt, every belt, every hose, connectors, electrical, wiring, everything. Because somebody's hands obviously was on all of those items, we're gonna have to have our eyes on all of those items. So we can know that when it leaves here, all those things are properly reattached and properly connected. I'm kind of sad that a dealer and a couple other shops wouldn't take this on, but I can kind of understand it because it's a liability. This is one of those situations where we get everything fixed and maybe there was something that the previous shop did that we're not aware of and it backfires on us. So there definitely will be a clause for that in, in, on the ticket, on the invoice. We'll definitely do a good faith effort to make sure everything's good to go on this car. But the engine, can I guarantee the engine? Where did it come from? I didn't buy the engine, I'm not going to guarantee the engine. Once we've got everything done on this car, we'll definitely give you guys an update. We'll do a, another video. We may have actually found a few more items by then, who knows. So before this thing heads back to Louisiana, you guys will get another video on this really sweet F-Type. We use a lot of really cool tools in the shop, and if you want to check what kind of tools we have, they're for sale in our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut. We really appreciate it, and make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's cars coming in left and right. Thanks for watching. Thank you.